<laughs> I'm so excited. Hello. Hey there. Hello. You doing? guys look wonderful. Yeah. Oh, beautiful you. people. Beautiful You're people. Far too kind. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Thank well, you guys so much for sharing some time with us today. Go ahead, Tiffany. Well, I just right. want to introduce uh, ourselves. Your yes, thank you so much. Tony and I, we're Popcorn and Champagne. We are a new and up and coming podcast based on TV movies and entertainment. And we, I bet, well, actually, Fox, I saw the first time. And then when we heard of Unfinished Business, I was like, we have to, you know, meet these guys and, and be a part of your experience. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much for having us, Tip. And I hear that one of your friends with my girl. Dale Williams. <laughs> <laughs> she I was said, like, well, I know her. in good hands then. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, the Dale is our forever queen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one of the things that you know, Tiffany and I, we talk about, as she said, movies, TVs, and entertainment, but we also talk about documentaries. Like that is one of my most famous, favorite things to, to watch is a really good documentary. One of the things about this particular documentary, both of them, especially the first one, let me say there, it's beautiful. It was raw. It was compelling. It was sad. Yet it was joyful. But what I love the most about that particular documentary was you knew or did you know how great this story was going to be because you were videoing at a very early age. How did you know? Some things you just know, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so this was one of those things that I just knew. Initially, I started filming to save those moments for my husband to make sure that it was like a form of resistance that no matter what the state of Louisiana said, he was going to bear witness to his children um, going, going to elementary school, going to the dance and the prom, and that I was going to hold those things for him. Mm -hmm. But probably when we got about 10 years in, I realized that, wow, I can't believe we're still in this system Us yeah. for the, the, the infraction that we made, that we're yeah. still here a decade later and I'm watching my children grow up and, and turn into men right before my eyes. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, the, my greatest hope was that their father would be returned before they reached manhood. And mm -hmm. so as I'm watching my dream slip away, I knew that I had to continue to document because whatever, however, that if this was happening to my family, there were countless other families that this was happening to, that it wasn't just a my family problem, but it's an American sickness when we leave the entire world in incarceration. And then to think about my great state of Louisiana, we lead the United States. Mm -hmm. So that means that Louisiana is the largest incarcerated per capita in the, yeah. on the entire planet. That's and right. so my goal was to make sure that I could document so that I could share with other people this travesty that is going on right in front of our eyes and how they have dressed it. We just don't seem to see it for it itself. Yeah. What, what, one of your quotes that I loved, uh, to be free is to free others. Um, and that just really stuck with me. Um, another one of the things that just... <laughs> resonated was your strength as a woman to hold it down. When I tell you to, raise, to, raise, to raise those young men, to support your husband in during this time, I can't imagine. Girl, I wouldn't where, want you to. Where the, strength, <laughs> where the strength came from. Can you elaborate some on how did you keep that going and your household? You know how it is when we women fix our minds to something, no matter what it was. Yeah. If my husband and I didn't make it, it wasn't going to be because the state of Louisiana came in between our business. If That's my right. family didn't survive, it wasn't going to be because the state put sanctions on me that were impossible to achieve. Um, and so it was the, the Black family motto is a form of resistance itself. 
That's Since right. we came to this country, it is a model that has not been uh, edified, less than lonely, recognized. Uh, it's a model that has not been honored. You know, when we came up out of slavery, there were more people getting married. Um, in there were more Black people getting married in 1930 than there were white people. And then by 1960s, all of us from there forward, our numbers are declining. And now 75% of Black women never make it to the altar. So just the just maintaining a family is a form of resistance. And that's what it was for us. It was just that we understood after having compromised it. That's right. That the greatest asset that we have on this life's journey is our family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Oscar it. nominated. Oscar nominated, right? You're going to get that Oscar. You keep doing what you're doing. You're going to yeah. get that. Yeah, yeah. seriously. And, and, and can I just say, the dress and the pearls, like, I was there for it. I was going to say something about those pearls. Love yes, the pearls. Yes, ma'am. Rob helped pearls. me design my dress. That was an Essie Azenzibor design. Beautiful. And then Rob says, well, can you run the pearls all the way down the back bar? I was like, oh, I love that. Thing. <laughs> oh, was, Rob. Gorgeous. It was gorgeous. <laughs> And listen, so, I, since we are in the tea, can I just tell you all this one little part? Please. Yeah. We arrive at the Oscars. It is the most exclusive Oscar ever, the 93rd Oscars, because it's at the um up on the other side of COVID. And when yeah. we get to the red carpet and they give you this little area where you can clean yourself up before you go into the main strip, this staffer comes over to me. She touches my arm. She says, excuse me, ma'am. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, what did I do? I ain't in the right place. What happened? <laughs> I just want you to know I've been working here for 12 years and that is the baddest dress I have ever seen. Love I love it, baby. Yes. Oh my you chest, you wore that dress. You did. You, you did. You wore that dress. You wore Thank that dress. You. Thank you. So Rob, now that you are out um, and your wife is an activist, right? Mm -hmm. Just like you. Are you, are, do you think that you've picked up some of her habits, some of her good habits and trying to do something with prison reform? Mm. I think I can borrow maybe even from some of the words that she spoke in the first documentary that you guys yeah. love so much when she was talking to the group of women. Mm -hmm. And she says that if I were a man, what type of man would I be? Yeah. And I think she was hinting to say that the type of man, if she could put herself into the body of a man, that that man would be me. Mm. So with that being mm. said, I think Fox and I are like the sun and the moon. We reflect one another. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, my advocacy was inside of prison uh, long before, um, you know, any of the, the notions of uh, Fox being a crusader. And this is something that maybe I came along and became a part of. It was something that both of us knew uh, that that needed to be uh, needed to be changed. That needed to uh, needed to be fixed. And with that being said, um, like I said, my advocacy started on the inside while I was in prison. I was able to get uh, my four year degree through the uh, New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. So I got my degree in uh, in theology. Uh, but my ministry was not a ministry about saving, uh, not about salvation. But my ministry was a ministry of social justice. So instead of saving lives, I left that part. Uh, to the, you know, to God himself. But as far as uh, helping people navigate their legal matters, that became uh, what I uh, journeyed through the prison, yeah. uh, advocating and preaching, so to speak. And with that said, when I came home, we just only picked up and continued the work that I had already started on the inside of prison. Mm -hmm. And hence, mm -hmm. we started our organization, uh, Rich Family Ministries, with the first initiative of that being uh, participatory defense. Um, that organization is how it is that we carry out uh, the uh, the work and the uh, and the responsibility that we have uh, to give freedom to others, knowing that we now have it for ourselves. So, so because we're so pressed for time, ten minutes is not enough. I swear, like I had so much stuff to talk about. But um, one of the things, Rob, that 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 um, came out to me in the in the documentary was how you said you had been incarcerated for so long, and when you got out, like you didn't want to, you wanted your own space right. to like figure out your freedom, so to speak. Mm -hmm. right. um, I thought that was very uh, prominent when you said that. 
Um, because I think people don't think about that once you've been incarcerated for so long. You love your right. wife, you love your family and children, but you got to still figure out how to maneuver in this world. Correct. And then two, um, um, okay, we have to talk about your nephew, Ontario. Like mm -hmm. at the end, I was gasping for air. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. my God. Yeah. The yeah. freedom and the, yeah. the, the burden that was lifted knowing that he was out. Can you tell us about that? Like, it was just, it took my breath away. <laughs> the day after we got Ontario home, we slept the entire weekend. Oh, I mean, literally, yeah. we did not get yeah. out of bed the entire weekend after he came home. And uh, we just couldn't even believe how exhausted we were. And it was revealed to us what a weight had been lifted out of our spirits that yeah. we had completed that mission. When Rob came home from prison, nobody cheered to receive him. The first mm -hmm. question from his family was, where's my nephew? Yeah. Where's my sister's child? Yeah. So they didn't want to hear anything about, oh, I'm glad you're home. None of that. The yeah. only yeah. thing that they were concerned about hearing is, you here, why he not? That's right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was a whole healing circle that sure. we could now say that we have paid homage. We have honored our family. We have worked to restore the harm we did to our lineage by bringing him home and bringing him back into his mother and father's arms in one piece. And so, yeah, to say that a weight was lifted is definitely an understatement, uh, Tiff. It's like when you have a loved one incarcerated, you are incarcerated. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. you, you're thinking about when they're going to call, if you got money on the phone, if you got money on the email, books are you going to be able to have enough money to go visit because they are so far away we ain't got but 10 minutes we have to i will say one thing too you said is when we fight we win you guys won y'all fought and you won congratulations Actually, tony tony tell um uh, rob told it to me better um in the documentary we say we already won rob said it ain't over we still winning so that's um, right we fight we win and we that's, win right. so low, you know? that's what i'm saying i want to know what's next i know you guys have some things in the works like you guys need a television show you exactly <laughs> you do you guys need to I mean, Fox, it. your direction like you you're on to something i'm telling you yeah. thank you yeah, yeah. I appreciate you all giving us an opportunity on your platform. Much success to you women. There's nothing more powerful than a thought whose time has come. So yeah. every good thing that you are thinking about this show, that and more. Thank you. And I'm yeah. thank you. You will be at Essence. So I hope I see you guys. Yes. You, you better. You better. Yes. July yes. 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 I'm July on the, six. July the 6th at 10 a.m. Okay. That is where we're screening. July 6th, where? 10 a.m. convention center. At the convention center. Second I'm floor. I'm going to be there and I want to squeeze your next box. I just want to <laughs> give you a big hug. <laughs> yeah, I can use all of that. Y'all take care. Safe travel. Thank you so much. God, God bless. bless. See y'all at Essence. Bye. Thank you.